What is the go-to library in Elixir for working with WebSockets? Hey, what's up? It's Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we're going to take a look at WebSockX. And this is, in my opinion, the go-to library for working with WebSockets in Elixir. However, uh, it's just for making clients. If you need to make a WebSocket server, then check out an Erlang library called Gun. It's a bit lower level, but you can do anything with it. Now, in contrast, WebSockX is probably going to be easier to get started with if you are an Elixir dev who didn't come from a background of working with, with Erlang. So we're just going to get started right away. I have a new mix project, not Phoenix, just plain mix for project. And in our depths, we're going to add the, actually, I think I've already got it in my, my copy paste buffer. We'll add WebSockX and current version 0.4.3. Then we'll mix depths.get to get that. Should be super quick. And I'm going to start IEX-S mix just so we have it available. You'll see there are a few deprecation warnings that's coming from library code. It's fairly common to see this kind of thing. Don't worry about it too much. All right, now we're going to go to sockets EX. Actually, we're going to make a new module. We'll just call this echo client. We'll full screen this. And since the file name is echo client, the module name will also be echo client. We we'll use WebSockX to pull in that behavior. And then we're going to paste in an echo server address. Uh, this is just at echo.websocket.org. It's a secure WebSocket address. And this server is just uh, an open server where we can test our WebSocket clients. It just replies to whatever we send with the same thing thus the name echo. This library supports both start and start link, depending on whether if we want our client to be in a linked process or an unlinked one. 99 times out of 100, we probably want it to be in a linked one. So I'll use start link. And then we'll call link and pass it the echo server and pass it this module and state, which is just going to be an empty map for now, and then the options, which are an empty keyword list or an empty list. And actually, this is all we need in order to start messing around in IEX. So let's do that. And when we call the start link, it's going to return an OK tuple with OK and the PID or the process ID of the uh, process where it's linked. And we'll just call WebSockX, actually, no, we'll call echo client, echo client dot start link. And that's all we need to do, uh, except recompile. Okay. And we got a warning authenticity is not established by certificate path validation. So the problem here is. This is a secure WebSocket link. For now, let's just use plain text WebSocket and recompile. So we'll do WebSockets.send frame. This will send a WebSocket frame and we'll pass in the PID and then we'll pass in a tuple. Text is going to be the type of frame we're sending and then a message. We'll say, hello world. And now we can see we got a runtime error. No handle frame clause was provided for text hello world. That's because we sent hello world to the echo client or to the echo server. And then it responded with the same thing and we didn't handle it. So we got a crash. So the simplest thing we can do is just make a uh, handle frame that handles every message uh, and just logs it out. So handle frame and it's getting text and it's getting uh, some kind of message. And then of course we have state, which we're not doing anything with yet. And handle frame will just log it out. So we'll just say logger.info 
uh, echo server says, and then whatever the message is. And then we need to return a state and an okay tuple. So say okay and state. Must require logger, of course, require logger. Okay, so now we'll start up our echo client and we'll send it a frame of text saying hello world. And echo server says hello world. So note that this is not us logging it when we send it. This is the response that came from the echo server. And uh, we captured the response and then handled it with, with that state. And we could do something a little bit more complicated. We can make one that uh, sends a reply back if we get certain text. Actually, let's put this above. We'll just make another version of handle frame. So handle frame and if our message is please reply, then we'll do something a little bit different. Actually, I think we still want this message, so I'll grab that. So we'll reply to the, or we'll just log out the echo server's reply, and then we'll craft our own message to send back. So our message will be uh, back at you. And then we'll log that we sent that. So we'll say uh, sent to echo server the new message. And see, let's just call this message reply. And then we'll answer with OK, uh, with reply text and reply and then still our state that we're not really using okay so with this let's see echo server says message okay let's recompile start up the server and or start up our client and then we'll send hello world hello world is there and now what happens if we say please reply so echo server says please reply we receive that and then send back to echo server back at you and then of course echo server echoes that as well next thing to do is stopping all of this that's pretty straightforward as well. So this will be another handle frame. And this is text. And we'll just, we'll say if we get a, a frame that is uh, shut down, then we'll shut down. And in this case, we are still going to log out that message. Actually, we'll just say, Shutting down. And here we'll re send close tuple and the state. We'll recompile again. Start it up. And now we'll say shut down and it shuts down. And if we try to send it anything else, we can't because it's already been shut down. And then what happens when there's a disconnection from their side? Well, that's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna paste in some boilerplate. There's a handle disconnect that you can use to capture what happened. There's gonna be a tuple that will start with a reason and there'll be a, a reason. Uh, this is actually going to be uh, a, another tuple. It'll be like a reason, then a type of it, and then reason data inside of that and um, whatever state you had, and we can just log out whatever the reason was, and we can have different code to deal with different kinds of disconnections. And that is pretty much the basics. That, that's enough to get started. Uh, if we want to handle SSH, we can 
just add some socket options. So uh, socket ops, and that is going to be SSL options. And the SSL options are going to have ciphers and SSL, this is Erlang library, cipher suites. And we can add uh, RSA and AES 128. And then obviously there are a lot of, uh, a lot of options of what we can add, but we'll just add these ciphers and then we'll just merge these options into whatever we pass into the start link. So we'll say ops equals uh, keyword dot merge. And this is going to be ops and socket ops, like so. Okay, it took me a little bit of time to figure out what happened here. Turns out there are some deprecations of Cypher Suites, zero arity, which is what I used, and one arity, but we can get all the suites we need with all and TLSL v123 so instead of manually appending the suites i'll just pass in all and then the tls version so that's tls version 1.3 and this has got to be in quotes because we have a dot in it otherwise the atom name couldn't have a dot save that recompile and we'll start the link okay this warning is actually not our problem the problem is that they don't have a certificate on this example server that's totally fine um, so just to be sure that we are able to communicate using uh, WebSocket secure connection let's send a message please reply and yeah looks like all is good so that's a, a quick look at what we can do with WebSockX. As I said, we can work with uh, the state and build out whatever functionality we need, just like you would with your normal workflow with any gen server. Hope you found that useful. Till next time.